Hi everybody, today we're gonna fix another storm damaged Xbox Series X. This one is completely dead and the problem most likely lies in the power supply. It's very easy to diagnose. Plug the power cable into the outlet and then very slowly plug the cable into the power input port of your console. If you don't hear any electrical arcing, then the input circuit of the power supply is definitely faulty. So let's get started. All you need is a Torx T9 and T10 screwdriver, a simple soldering kit and the new components. I'll put the links in the description below. Now let's remove the power supply. I won't be covering the disassembly process, I have a dedicated video on that. By the way, I also have videos on upgrading or replacing the SSD, cleaning the cooling system and replacing the thermal pads and paste. Ok, let's check the power supply one more time before we open it. There should be 12 volts between any grey and black wires, regardless of where you attach the leads. And as you can see, there are no voltage readings. Let's start by removing this mounting bracket and then take off the top cover. To access internals, press on all of these latches while maintaining tension on the internal plastic case, like this. Now we can pull it out from this metal shielding. Next, we need to remove this plastic cover. As you can see, we have two tiny holes on both sides. To release the cover, use something thin like a paper clip to push the latches. Now let's check all critical components. Set your multimeter to continuity mode. We'll begin with the fuse. And there's no continuity, which means the fuse is blown. Next, let's check this varistor, which should have very high resistance. But in our case, there's a short. The varistor is connected in parallel to the AC line after the fuse. The AC voltage then goes to these pins on the diode bridge, and this line is shorted. So, let's desolder the varistor to make sure it's not something else causing the short. And as you can see, the short is gone. The varistor sacrificed itself to protect the whole unit. Next, we need to check this thermistor, which should have about 5 ohms resistance at room temperature. And we got it. If you don't get any readings, or if it's something way higher, just replace it or use a wire bridge as a temporary solution. Now, let's move on to checking the diode bridge. Inside this component, there are four diodes, which look something like this, and we need to check all of them. Attach the positive lead to the anode and the negative one to the cathode. You should see about 0.5 voltage drop, and in reverse bias, there shouldn't be any readings. If there are no readings at all on some diodes, or if there's a short, replace the component. In my case, I don't see any anomalies here. Next, I'm gonna check this diode using the same principle. It looks good. Now let's check this MOSFET, which is super inconvenient because of all the stuff around. Connect the positive lead to the MOSFET's gate and the negative one to the source, and then to the drain. You should see a voltage drop similar to diodes. If you don't get any readings between those terminals or if there's a short, replace the MOSFET. Also check if there's no short between the source and the drain terminals. In my case, everything's fine. So, it seems like we just need to replace these two components, which cost about $2. Let's apply a bit of flux and remove them from the board, like so. Next, I'm gonna remove the excess solder with a wick. Let's solder down a new varistor. and then trim its terminals. So, before we solder a new fuse, I want to show you one trick that I use for all switching power supply diagnostic. All you need is a 50 watt incandescent bulb, 120 or 220 volts, depending on where you live. I'm gonna use this bulb in series with the power supply as a current limiter and an indicator. The easiest way is to attach it to the fuse solder pads. If I miss something or if there's a short somewhere, the power supply will draw a lot of current, but nothing will blow up because the bulb will take all the current and will glow at its normal brightness, indicating that we have a problem. If the bulb glows at a fraction of its brightness, the power supply is safe to use without it. And as you can see, we got 12 volts output. 
Now we can solder a new fuse and be confident that the power supply will work. Finally, let's put everything back together. And now we can reassemble the console. That's how it sounds when the input stage of the power supply more or less alive. The console turns on and the problem has been solved.